Well, we begin in Ukraine, where President Volodymyr Zelensky says his forces are gearing up for what will be a tough battle against Russian troops amassing in the eastern part of the country. Civilians in the Donbass region are trying desperately to get out as Moscow shifts its focus to that area. Dozens of those evacuating civilians were killed in a missile strike on a train station Friday. More than 100 people were hurt. Russia denies responsibility for the attack, but U.S. officials say Russia is lying. And President Zelensky lays the blame squarely at the feet of Moscow. He called the attack a war crime and urged a tough global response. Foreign correspondent Holly Williams is on the ground for us reporting in Ukraine. Hello, Holly. The images are so disturbing from that attack, particularly when you're reminded that these are all civilians trying desperately to flee. What is the latest that you're hearing about the aftermath? Well, Lana, Ukrainian officials are now saying that more than 50 people were killed in that missile strike on the train station, including some children. And as you just pointed out, more than 100 people injured. There are reports of medics working through the night to try and save lives. Uh, and we understand that some of the survivors lost limbs in that attack. Now, for its part, Russia is denying any responsibility and is even suggesting that Ukraine did this, that Ukraine carried out a missile strike uh, hitting its its own people. Uh, a senior American official has dismissed that, saying that the U.S. simply isn't buying that. However, we're, we're seeing a sort of a pattern emerging now, because remember, after the massacre of civilians in the town of Butcher that emerged in the last few days, where we saw people seemingly killed execution style by Russian troops uh, with their hands tied behind their backs, Russia also said that it had no responsibility for those killings, uh, and it said that the videos that emerged from Butcher had been staged. Uh, I'm wondering, Holly, how things then are, are, are feeling there in Ukraine, especially with 10 humanitarian corridors being opened up right now, according to Ukrainian officials. Tell us, how are, how are people that you're talking to responding to that idea, and are these corridors expected to hold? Well, in terms of whether those humanitarian corridors actually work, I think the short answer is that we just don't know at this point. Uh, that agreement that Ukrainian officials announced apparently applied to 10 cities uh, in the east of Ukraine, including Mariupol, which famously has been besieged and bombarded for several weeks, but also other cities, including Berdyansk, Ernegador and Melitopol. There are reports that some people did make it out today, but we just don't know how many. Uh, separately, Ukrainian officials have urged civilians living in the Luhansk region in Ukraine's far east to flee immediately. And I should say that as we drove through central Ukraine today for several hours, we in some places saw long lines of cars heading from eastern Ukraine to the west. Um, and I think it's safe to say that many of those people would have been fleeing, would have been moving west ahead of what is expected to be an escalation of fighting in the east. Uh, I want to talk to you when we're talking about the east, particularly the southeastern Donbass region. We've seen Russia shift its strategy there. Explain for all of us why that area is so important to Moscow. Well, uh, parts of the far east of Ukraine in the Donetsk region, region and Luhansk region have been controlled by Russian-backed separatists uh, since 2014. And shortly before the invasion, Russia actually recognised those breakaway regions uh, as, as independent states, as independent republics. Now, with Russia's original battle plan uh, seemingly a failure, you know, the Russian troops were not able to take control of Ukraine's capital Kiev quickly and they've now withdrawn across the border where they're regrouping. There's a lot of speculation and I would stress that it's speculation that Russia's perhaps more limited goals uh, involve locking down and increasing the territory they control in eastern Ukraine and perhaps also connecting it to Crimea in the south which Russia annexed back in 2014. All right Holly Williams thank you.